Hello, Mioni here, or should I say former Mioni? Today we're going to be looking at animals, uh, specifically what they, uh, you know, what the advantage of having animals is and what you can use them for. So a lot of people probably don't know this or they don't want to read the tooltips. So welcome on in to my farm. As you can see, I have a plethora of interesting creatures. There's actually a really cool Reddit thread I'll link in the description of this video that I was following along as people from a community were finding out where all of the uh, rare monsters would spawn. So I'll share that in, in the comment section. But there's actually a difference between uh, rare and normal uh, creatures that you capture. Although, both can still capture different types of item. Now, I just got uh, some claws, which you can't see. Hold on, let's see, where would they be? Inventory? There we go. Yes. So I got a sanctuary claw from this oppo oppo. But I can also get... A higher chance of other items from the rare variants of those. I think that's how that works. So we've got a star marmot over here, which is um, a rare version of one of the marmots. And if we click on one of him, you know, the squirrels, we got sanctuary fur, right? So that's something I wasn't getting previously. It, it just wouldn't give me it off a normal squirrel. So I've got sanctuary fur. Now, obviously, some monsters share exactly the same items, right? Because you need to have that. We've got Sanctuary Eggs, for example, from a normal dodo over here. Um, the Black Chocobo could be Claws, again, right? But we got Sanctuary Feathers, okay? And you get 50 Island Sanctuary for this. So, uh, experience, that is. So, it's worth it just for that. But there is another use for these items. We've got Sanctuary Fleece there. We've got uh, Sanctuary Fleece and Milk. So the Black Caracal is like one of the rare variants of the sheep. Probably a few of you have already got this. But you have a higher chance of getting milk. And sometimes milk as well as the fleece. So fleece obviously is going to be used in your handicrafts. All of these items will be used in various handicrafts in your workshop that you can send out. Uh, you know, the um, four, six and eight hour missions, let's call them. And each one of those has a variety of requirements right this is my material allocation that i've set up for the next few weeks but of course this would have you know other things on it if i chose those other recipes so we have access to milk now because of this fella and we've got fleece what you could do is find out what handicraft you want to make a lot of and then just fill your farm full of that one type of creature would i advise that probably not simply because the variety of things unlocks choice right and the more choice we have the better overall right at, at less at least at the start so the coblins they give us fangs as you can see and then we've got the island stag which is a variant of, of one of the other does uh, that's going to give us some sanctuary fur i believe that can also give us claws as well but yeah it's kind of random what they give you but i noticed that the um, rare versions of them do seem to give you uh, different things. I mean, this is the rare App Carlo, which is absolutely beautiful, by the way, and uh, has a silly run. We'll just well I'll include the silly run in the video. Let's do that. Hold on. We're going to beckon mode. Watch, watch him run. Wee! It's like he's late for the bus or something. And um, <laughs> let's make sure we feed these fellas as well. So you can obviously feed uh, different things to them. Uh, to get other feeds, you would actually use your crops to grow uh, certain things to then make into feeds, right? So you'd have the various crops, as you can see here, but uh, we've not actually done a single harvest yet so far on my island. And then you can create your better stuff. Now, what these would do, if you read the, the tooltip, is it says it will give you um, improves mood up to content, right? The second one improves mood up to chipper, and the third one is the Gleeful. Now, I'm not sure how those translate into actual gameplay mechanics, but I would imagine it would be an increase to the amount of items you might get from the next cycle of harvesting them. That's a complete guess. There's so little that's really known about this at the moment, um, but that's that would be my guess. If anybody knows how feed different feeds affect the animals, apart from just in the mood. Maybe the mood affects how frequently you would need to feed them or something. But I would imagine it's probably something to do with the materials you get back. So what you need to do is make sure you feed your animals. 
So my, my top tip, as soon as you get your island, stuff uh, this place with as many animals as possible and feed them. Um, just because the faster you do that, the faster the cycle can, can begin of you getting materials. And we'll have a look at what those materials can do in just a second. You'll be surprised, probably, um, by the usability. Uh, and it's going to come down to what you want to do with them. Right, so we've fed all our animals, we've gathered from them, and we've got a decent haul of items here, right? I would say that's a fairly good haul. You know, it could be better. Uh, and as we expand the farm even further, obviously we're going to have access to other stuff. So one of the things that you can do with these materials before we do anything uh, is they actually have a sell value. So if you don't know this, if you go to your cozy hub and go to your carry exchange uh, and you go, no, go to the, um, the exporter, sorry, and you go to rare materials, that's the ones for, that they bring back from granary, by the way. Uh, but if you go to leavings, this is what you can sell from your animals. Now, obviously, these things all have different values. But as you can see, these materials, at least the ones I've found so far, have a sell value of 12 blue cowries each. Now, that's quite significant considering I'm at a state where I need 1,500 blue cowries for pretty much every advancement, including that to the farm itself to upgrade and, and allow more animals. So that's something I could do. I could sell these and then upgrade that. Um, but one of the other things you can do, if cowries are not important to you, sorry, I had to laugh there because cowries are like the lifeblood of this. Just a PSA for anybody starting out, do not spend seafarers' cowries on glamour and items you will be behind on the progression of your island and you will be hard capped well soft capped when you go through this and you'll have to grind silly it's it's something they should put in big bold writing on the screen for people because i think that it's far too tempting like i was really tempted to start making videos on the rewards but it's, it's just not it's just not cricket. <laughs> they need to they need to shout at me to stop me, I think. So this is going to give me my carries from my missions uh, that we've got on our workshop agenda. If you don't know about this, essentially you send work orders, right? So you cr you gather things in the island. You you select what you want to to make. For example, today we're making uh, whatever a makuhayutil is, and then an island chair. We're going to fill that efficiency bonus. The efficiency bonus goes towards Groove, by the way. Groove actually improves the amount of items you get back um, from their missions, if that makes sense. Uh, from, from like, Mammoth missions, so your granary missions and things like that. It improves the mood of the island, and it increases productivity. That's what it says on the tooltip, but it actually gives you more items back, which is really nice. I wish they'd probably made that a little clearer as well. There's a lot of discovery on the island. <laughs> but as you can see, I've got things set up, but let's say we were going to change this. Let's just uh, clear these two items just for now. And uh, we'll go down to the eight-hour section, for example. You'll notice... Um, where is it? Well, maybe it's a six-hour section. You will find things like the Isle, Isle Work Sweet Popato, right? Will require things like your Sanctuary Milk. Now, Sanctuary Milk, as we've discovered, has a higher chance from a Black Caracal. So what I could do, technically, is I could create, uh, create a Black Caracal farm and just farm milk as part of this. And then, obviously, the Popatos would be from the Popato seeds that you can get when you have access to a shovel. And then you can get the popato seeds and plant them in your crops. And that takes three days for them to grow, if I remember correctly. So every three days, we could make it so that we could do some uh, Isleworks sweet popatos, which are worth 79 blue cowries each time they return every six hours. So you've got to do some mathematics, really. You've got to kind of judge what you want to do. Or you could just be really, you know, basic and just use these stuff. You know, combine the basic potion fire sand thing like it tells you in a tutorial and you'll still get your groove bonus and then just sell them the, the items and get calories right straight up calories but you know you're going to get more calories if you save your items and invest them right that's that's the lesson to be learned from this is reinvesting what you gather from your farm into crafting 
is how you're going to get more things. Like, we've got the Isleworks Cavaliers hat, for, uh, for example, here. It takes two of those feathers. Realistically, as you can see, a lot of these things require, like, two of something and, you know, three of something. Or, or you know, it's rare that it's just one of something. So, ideally, you could be in a situation where you would need to have, like, two of a feathered creature or more, right? Or three of a milk type creature, or whatever you you think would work best, and it's going to be RNG what you get from those, obviously. But that's another use: is investing them to get carries later. Let me just quickly set this back up because um, I don't have any other plans at the moment. <laughs> I need to go gather some other stuff. But anything you change in here will update on this section here. Uh, the material allocation and you can set up the current day the current week and this week and next week and then you can go and gather those items and it updates with a deficit for example i need another 33 island vine and i don't need them today i don't need them this week but i need to make sure i get at least 33 island vine by next week if i stick with those crafts obviously so it's a good idea to plan these out, even if you want to change them at any any point. But as you can see, if we look at the earnings, so far this week I've got 921 carries, which isn't great, admittedly. But this is just because of the Isleworks Potion and Fire Sand thing. That, But you'll notice that I brought the first time I sent them out, I got 4. The second time I sent them out, I got 16 and 15. So it's going to build up. So the idea is to try and keep that combo going, right? And you can see your groove meter anytime when you go to the agenda and it says 17 out of 20. You know, you want to try and keep this going, keep the groove going. There's lots of interesting mechanics like that. And as I said before, for the other items that you might be like, where's Garnet from? Your granary is where you get a lot of that stuff from. So as you can see, um, I sent one of my granaries out to Fatal Falls and I got raw island garnet. So the rare resources are actually something you can only get. Let's collect those once we're here. Boom, boom, boom. That's going to give us some experience and stuff. And we'll show you where you can send them. So as you can see, each of these places has a, a rare resource. Now, depending on my groove meter, is depending on how much of this re rare resource they might bring back. It does cost you 50 carries a pop. So bear that in mind. So what you can do is you can grow stuff on your crops. You can set up your animals in such a way that they provide materials that you would need for some handicrafts. And for all of the rest, you can set up mammoth based missions to get the other things that you would like. Now, bear in mind a lot of these rare, rare resources, not only are they used for uh, workshop uh, missions, you can also find that they're used for upgrading facilities. This, for example, is a Workshop 2, right? If I wanted to get that to Workshop 3, you'll see that I actually need three Raw Island Garnets. The only way of me physically getting those is from the Mammoth missions, right? So, at the end of the day, to upgrade all of the stuff on my island, you'll find this with a lot of things, like the spruce logs required. I do actually need to make the most of my granary. So, it's all priority. The more we upgrade our workshops, the more efficient they are, the better they are, the more things they bring back, i.e. the more calories we make, but also the granary stuff, the items you do bring back, even if it is 50 a pop, you can also sell those for calories as well, if you're short. So essentially, you're getting island experience every time you send the mammoths out anyway. So as long as you're not 100% locked uh, behind an upgrade that needs like, I don't know, say for instance you needed those 50 carries that day to upgrade your farm or whatever, you were like 50 away, it's probably not a good idea to send out your granary missions. However, you know, you can send them out. If you've got nothing planned, send them out because when they come back, as you can see, those are 25 each. I've actually got two of them. I've just made my carries back if I wanted to sell those garnets. I don't want to sell those garnets at the moment. However, I will say uh, sell the silver ore, which I have three of, right? That was 25. So I actually made a profit. You start to make a profit. The higher you upgrade your granaries, the more granaries you have, 
the more profit you will make. So I spent 50 and got 75 back as well as experience for the farm. And that's the thing that matters the most, right? The experience to get higher level as possible, the higher rank, the more access to things we have. For example, at rank eight, we unlocked the ability to capture large animals and things like that. And a lot of other crafts unlocked. There's a, there's a ton of faceted information to this. It is quite a deep mode. But anyway, I thought I'd talk about the use of animals, the use of workshops, and how it all individually cannot be talked about and collectively works together into one big machine. But yeah, hopefully that was insightful. It's uh, it's something that you kind of have to plod along and discover yourself. But I'm loving Island Sanctuary. Let me know what you think. And uh, if you've got any top tips of order of things and uh, feel free to post some links as well. I'll try and allow the links through of like spreadsheets and things like that um, to places but uh, check the description out, like I say, if you want to get some of the rare monsters. Um, we will do a guide on that as well. I just want to get them first, and then uh, I'll work through um, a video visual guide for where to get those monsters. Much love, enjoy the rest of your day, happy Island Sanctuary, and I'll see you all next time. Bye-bye.